first came up with the idea because I was working down in the ski industry and I saw the need to make snow when the temperature was above freezing was when the snow was melting and that was when they couldn't make snow so I set out to try and figure out a way to do it. product development for air industrial gases and we're working with this company Polar Technologies. Uh, the inventor of this snow gun, Andrew French, is the first person successfully to take a cryogenic fluid, mix it inside his gun and not have it plug up solid. It actually, the liquid water comes out, mixes with the cryogenic product and it makes snow. And what this does is it allows the ability to make snow independent of what Mother Nature is doing. Uh, in the past, it used to require about a 28 degree Fahrenheit temperature for snow making equipment to make snow, and that's why ski resorts have a very lopsided season for profitability. They never know when they're going to have snow on the mountain. But what this does is allows them independent of what it happens on a given day, and a warm front comes through to keep snow on the mountain and let their skiers know that they're, when they get there, they're going to have something to do besides look out, out the window at the mountain. The two people involved in this are Polar Technologies and Airco Industrial Gases. Uh, Polar Technologies brings to the table the snowmaking equipment and the knowledge of the ski resorts. Airco Industrial Gases is a major producer of industrial gases. Uh, it's a member of the BOC group and around the world we produce cryogenic products in all different forms. So we bring to the table the ability to make inexpensive cryogenic products Andrew French with Polar Technologies brings to the table snowmaking equipment and the need for cryogen, so it's a perfect marriage. We're able to support him anywhere in the world that he may need to put his systems in. Snowmaking gun itself, what it does is it takes water and it takes a cryogen, which in this case, at this facility we're using liquid nitrogen today, but on a ski resort it would be liquid air. What he's done is the ability to take the cryogen and put it in at the right place so that as the water comes out it begins to disperse, the cryogenic properties of our products take over and make the, the water think it's mother nature being cold outside. The lit cryogen itself is at minus 300 degrees, so it's much colder than Mother Nature, so it's much more efficient in converting the water to snow. And the snow itself is made then at a, at a colder temperature. So what happens is, even compared to Mother Nature at 28 degrees, you'll get more snow out of the given water because it's so cold, because when it hits the ground, it's colder than when, what Mother Nature made it at and therefore it takes longer for it to warm up and melt away. So the snow that gets on the ground stays on the ground longer. Some of the questions that will come up will be uh, in the area of, of cost effectiveness, uh, logistics in being able to, to implement a, a full scale system on the ski slopes and that sort of thing. How are you gonna answer? Well, I'm gonna tell them that uh, the cost uh, uh, is effective, it's all relative. Uh, compared to the way that they're manufacturing snow right now, uh, they have to rely on Mother Nature to drop the temperature below 28 degrees and they have to rely on the winds to be favorable and not be blowing and they only get about a, a, maybe a 50% efficiency in water conversion. Uh, with our system you get 100% efficiency any temperature, anytime, anywhere uh, and the efficiencies of the snow conversion, water to snow conversion, uh, is basically where your cost savings are. We have uh, probably invested over the years about 15 to 18 million dollars in snowmaking at our ski area. And uh, we cover uh, close to 60 percent of our ski runs with snowmaking equipment. Matter of fact, the water lines and the compressed air lines that they already have running up and down the mountains would be utilized. They'd have to run a third set of lines uh, to accommodate the cryogenic fluid. Uh, also, the compressors that they currently use would be able to be 
fit right into our system, which would also save them money. In fact, there's some people around the world who are exploring the idea of inside ski resorts so that it does eliminate a little bit of the heat and sun conditions that might melt the snow. There's some people in Japan looking at it, and actually in England, to make the ski slope indoors. And this would be the perfect product for that because it doesn't use uh, any chemicals in the manufacturer's snow. When you have something indoors, you've got to be very careful uh, what you put in there because you've got people trying to breathe the atmosphere there. And by only pu needing to require pumping in water and, li and li liquid air, that's exactly what people need every day. So it's very safe and environmentally safe because there's no need for chemicals to be introduced. Well, we, we would be interested in indoor skiing if, for example, here in Sacramento, if you had an indoor ski arena. Uh, that would benefit our ski industry. It would uh, uh, create a place for people to go learn how to ski. They're going to uh, quickly grow out of that indoor uh, ski arena, and they're going to want to come to the big mountains and go skiing. And, and that would act as a, uh, as a feeder business, more or less, for our industry. And yeah, we'd be, we'd be tickled pink to, to see indoor ski arenas in the cities. Be great. Theoretically, it can be used anywhere uh, 24 hours a day. Uh, effectively and efficiently, it would be used when the temperature rises above 28 or 29 degrees, when it's not naturally snowing, uh, or uh, to supplement on the lower elevations where the temperatures are higher, when, they, when they're making snow at the higher elevations, as they do now, conventional snow making, uh, the, the temperatures may be a little bit higher at the lower elevations, so you need this to supplement that. Well, it would give you uh, uh, the advantage uh, of making snow during times where you, where you otherwise couldn't. And uh, in our industry, there are times where you make snow and then you wait for it to get cold again. And, and maybe you have a situation where uh, you only have to make a little bit more to get a run open, or maybe you have to, you got one bad spot on the run. Uh, but you have, have, do not have the cold temperature. Something like this could fill in that spot uh, and be cost effective in getting the whole run open because you, you know, it, it would uh, give you that uh, a chance to finish off the run. Now that's just one possibility to look at.